Okay, so uh, I'm going to do a video now, um, very similar to the last one I did about bringing home a baby bird from a breeder. Excuse me, but this one is going to be about bringing home a baby bird from an adoptive situation. Again, I'm going to try to speak really, really fast and rip through this as fast as I can because I have a lot of information that I want to go over. Um, I'm going to try to keep it as plain as I can, but if you have seen my other videos, I kind of stray from the beaten path. So, bringing home an adoptive bird. Um, first things first, you should know that adoptive birds are not like bringing home a baby bird from a breeder. Um, a lot of the times adoptive birds have little things that um, are not that great to have, little like little bad habits or whatnot. not. Um, where you might not get this from a baby bird and it's really hard sometimes to break bad habits out of birds who have been doing this for a very long time. Now when you bring home an adopted bird there's lots of things that you need to keep into consideration and you should always try to talk to the person you're adopting the bird from as much as you can to figure out exactly what it is um, that the bird has been used to and where they got the bird and whatnot. Try to know as much as you can um, as far as where she, where the person got the bird, he or she, um, where they, um, like how long they've had the bird for, what they feed the bird, um, any little habits that the bird might have, little things that they do with the bird that the bird might like. Um, if the bird whistles or talks, it might be good to know what exactly they say so that you can not only decipher what they're saying, but if you say something that they already know, then they feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, any other little habits like a certain time of day that they feed their birds or um, if they cover their birds at night. Um, you want to know all these things before you bring the bird home just so that you can keep as much the same as you can. Um, keeping these things the same means that it's one lesson that they have to get used to all at once. Um, I recently went through an, adopti an, an adoption. Um, I adopted a umbrella cockatoo which was quite the adventure. Um, and I tried to figure out as much as I could. I wanted to know what he ate and where they got him and if he was home before, which he was, and um, anything that he likes to eat, if he's got favorite foods. Um, anything that you can learn about, your, about the bird, the better. Um, so when you bring the bird home, um, again, traveling with a bird um, is fine. If you have a bird that is from a previous home and that has a very large cage, then I would suggest trying to find something else, something smaller to put the bird in. Do not leave your bird in the cage and put it in the back of a truck. I know it might be sound really stupid for me to say that, but I've heard of people doing stupider things, like putting their dogs in the back of trucks, open-ended open trucks, in a wire cage, ripping down the highway. Come on, people, use your brains. Even if it's if the the truck has a cap on it. Put the truck, put the bird in the cab, please. Um, boxes I don't suggest because again, bad ventilation. Ventilation, you can't really put food and water in there. Um, but if you really can't find a traveling cage to put the bird in or a cat carrier, then leaving in the leaving the bird in the cage is fine so long as the bird cage is kept level or whatnot. Um, I would suggest a van. If you can't do that, then a car obviously will work fine. But you have to remember that your birds are going to be very close to you. I wouldn't suggest covering the cage with a blanket just because birds will lose balance if it's dark and they can't see where they're going. Um, putting a, a sheet on one side of the cage though might be good if the bird feels very nervous. Birds will tend to back into a corner if they feel threatened and if the corner is blocked by a cage cover then they will feel less, less threatened because um, there's really less that can sneak up on them. There's, there's a wall there, right? Um, so there's that. When you bring your bird home, if the bird is claimed to be hand tamed, then I would suggest trying to get the bird out of the cage. Um, if the bird's wings are not clipped, I would suggest clipping them now. It's better to learn your bird before you let it fly around because you don't really know their limits or whatnot. And if the bird is scared and takes off and flies into a window, you could potentially lose your bird. Um, so I would suggest clipping its wings. If the wings are, are already clipped and the bird is friendly enough to come out, then great. If the bird will not step up on your hand, I would suggest opening the cage door and walking away. Don't stick next to the cage. Don't peer into the cage. If you have other animals, um, such as our cats or dogs or a rabbit or anything that might be running around, 
I would suggest putting them somewhere until um, your bird gets used to the house. Too many new things at once might be a little bit too much. And especially if the bird cage is open, you don't want your cat or dog jumping on the bird. Um, so leave the cage door open and walk around and just kind of do your own thing. If the bird decides that it wants to come out, it will. If, you, if you're too much in the bird's face, it will probably shy away and you don't want that. Um, again, with new baby birds, especially from the breeder, you want to establish that sense of that bond as soon as you can. But with newer bird or with older birds rather, that have been in previous homes, they're probably going to be a little bit more timid because that first bond that they had with the first owner is not there anymore. You're not them. So keep that in mind. Um, as far as bird food goes, my, my rule of thumb is if the bird is eating something good, like a good seed mix or a pelleted diet, then don't change anything. But if the bird is eating a really crappy seed diet, like a dollar store seed mix or sunflowers, sunflower seeds only, um, larger birds might be eating lots of nuts and not very much else, then here's what I suggest. For the first few days, your bird probably won't eat. It's very normal for a bird not to eat anything when they've changed an environment. My birds actually will stop eating if I'm away for a few days until they kind of realize that, you know, I might be away or whatever, and they will start eating again. Um, but a bird not eating for, for a, a few days is usually normal. If this carries on for too long, then the bird might be sick. That is when it's time to bring the bird immediately to an avian vet. I would suggest booking an appointment with an avian vet because the bird is from a previous home. Um, but that is completely up to you. Um, some avian vets are very out of reach. The closest avian vet to me is three and a half hours away. Um, but if an emergency like that came up, then I would be bringing a bird who is not eating there. Um, I wouldn't push that past three days. If the bird's not playing with anything and whatever, then I would definitely bring the bird to the vet. Although on the flip side, if the bird is playing with things but doesn't seem to have much of an appetite, then, you know, see, see what will happen the next couple days. Just remember, birds are very, very, very clever, and they will hide a sickness if they feel threatened. So pay attention to what your bird's eating, pay attention to its droppings. That will tell you a lot if the bird is sick or not feeling well. Um, if the bird is eating after a couple days then and the seed mix is not that great, my rule of thumb is five days. Wait five days before you change the diet because that way you can ensure that the bird is actually eating and it's feeling okay and whatnot and the bird isn't actually just sick. What happens if you change the food right all at once is that your bird will probably starve itself to death if it feels threatened and it doesn't want to eat. I've seen birds do it. They will refuse to eat to the point where they will starve to death. So, best thing to do is wait for five days and then slowly start changing the diet. I am going to do another video on bird food itself and I'll go through converting and whatnot. But don't start any converting until you are sure your bird is actually eating. Um, I think that's just about everything actually. Um, so there you have it. Um, I hope that you have very good luck with an adopted bird. They're lots of fun. Um, they're quite an adventure a lot of the time. Um, if you have any questions about um, bringing a bird, in, bringing any bird into a, into a new home, or if you have any questions about um, taming a bird who might not have been as tame as you thought, or what have you, please feel free to message me, and I'd be happy to help.